Okay, for folks that are just tuning in, um, we've got a rating system of A through F that we're going to go through for each of the cards, and it's important to differentiate because we've had some really smart viewers pointing out some great stuff that you might do in uh, modern or maybe historic. Um, this is not a standard legal set, so um, our rating system is only focused on limited. So if you look at something and go, yeah, but it'd be great in Commander, you may be right. Um, but we're just looking at limited kind of options right now. So our rating system is an A through F. And an A is one of the best cards in the format. You should absolutely prioritize it in the draft. But one of the things that really differentiates it is it's one of those cards that if you get it, it's probably going to win the game for you, right? So game winning card, a bomb. Um, a B is a very high value, strong card, and you should absolutely prioritize during the draft whenever possible. A C, which is most cards, um, is a filler. It's fine, but it's not amazing. So when you finish your draft and you get down to trimming your deck, you, your C cards are probably some of your first candidates that you're going to be looking at to, to trim, right? So the cards that are a C of some kind are probably not going to, may or may not make the cut. A D is generally poor value for their cost or they're just only good situationally. And then finally an F, again, is one of those cards you should just avoid in limited. As I mentioned, that's the, the lens that we're looking at these cards through. Awesome, starting with uh, the first artifact here, Andreal, Andreal Flame of the West, a three colorless for a legendary artifact equipment. Equipped, e equipped creature, it gets plus three, plus one. And whenever the equipped creature attacks, create two tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. If that creature is legendary, instead create two of those tokens that are tapped and attacking. It's also got to equip two cost. I gave this a solid B. I might even make this a B plus now that after I've read it some more. Um, I feel like as far as equipment goes, this I can get behind. Um, I I'll give it a B plus. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It is a little expensive to cast it, then equipment, then equip it the first time. Um, but the fact that once you do, that creature gets plus three, plus one is pretty awesome for so many cards we've already reviewed. I love that it's three colorless, so this goes with any color. That's kind of one of the more interesting things they've done in this set. There's a lot more equipment in artifacts, right? So it, you can you can play with all the colors. And then the, man, the upside of two tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. There's so many things that have token synergies. As we've talked about, we think flying is going to be a little extra strong in this set. Um, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm changing with you. this. Th this is really great. Um, I'm going to A for this. I was and just wondering that. It is a mythic, right? I'm going to leave it at B plus for now because it's still just an equipment, but... Oh, I'm going to change your mind here. Uh, think think about it this way. You, you you get the value off on one creature. Just one creature. Okay? Yeah. You, you had send it in. You're already creating some flyers off of this. Then you put this on one of the flyers. And then you're creating even more. You see? So I, I'm going with an A on Yeah, this. you're right. You throw this on a 1-1 one, one flyer that you just made. And it's this a is going to snowball, yeah. It's a 4-2 that's probably going to get in. Um, or it's going to kill an enemy flyer. Yeah, you're right. It's an A. You're right. This this snowballs into a win con. All right, moving on to Borrow Blade. It's a uh, Barrow Blade, Borrow Blade. I say Borrow. Uh, one colorless artifact equipment... Uh, Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever a creep, whenever equipped creature blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, that that creature loses all abilities until end of turn. Equip one colorless. I'm getting all tongue tied because we've been reading all day. Okay. So I gave it a I gave it a C plus, but then again. I like one mana equipments. Uh, I think it's very, um, very nice. Um, and it's only equip one. I, I could change this to a B minus. Uh, but would you uh, really prioritize this over other C plus cards, for example? No. So, well, no, yeah, C plus for me. 
is I, I'm in the C camp. I understand the C plus. I could, I, you know, if I'm, especially if I'm in like Boros or something that favors equipment, this gets more valuable to me. But just by itself, it's a C. I'm, I, you know, it's not amazing. It's probably more interesting for the fact that if I've got cards where an equip, equipped creature triggers something, then this is a cheap equipment, like you said. So I like that part of it, but it doesn't do a lot. So, yeah, I, and I don't know how often the that creature loses all abilities until end of turn thing is going to matter. I guess we'll find out. But I'm in the C camp for now. Yeah, I only gave it a C plus just because of the whenever if you put this on a creature and it blocks something, whatever it's blocking forces that creature to lose all of its abilities or vice versa. If it's blocking, you know, so if it's being blocked. Um, but yeah, I see. I see where you're going with it. So, yeah, C plus for me. Actually, let me ask a question. So is Death Touch an ability? I believe so. Is, is First Strike an ability? So, ooh, right? I think they might be. So maybe it's more interesting than I'm giving it credit for. I'm not okay. mistaken. But yeah, I mean, this is one of those cards that if I'm wrong, then I'll find out next week. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find a judge. We need a judge, please. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I was thinking of all the text on a card, right, as far as abilities, but um, just basic things like death touch and so forth if that's an ability and this causes a death toucher to lose death touch yeah for example dang okay yeah i like i like it so as far as equipment goes but yeah, yeah moving on int drought basin uh two colorless for an artifact and it's got an x colorless tap activation cost here so put a one one so a plus one plus one counter on target creature with power x activate only as a sorcery so it's it's uh basically if you want to put this on a five five um you know or a five power creature you have to spend five mana just to put a plus one plus one on it so i gave it a c yeah for me it's a d only because it's pretty situational where this is going to provide enough value for me because i'm going to slow myself down by spending two mana to play this and then i gotta spend x more mana to put just a plus one plus one on something now if this comes in late game it's awesome <laughs> i <laughs> right? can see doing a d on this so yeah i'll change mine i think it's really situational uh, I, again i'm not trying to talk you into it right i just i'm just looking at it kind of thinking like if i had this in my opening hand i wouldn't be super excited about it unless i didn't have a lot of other things to play but if i got this late game and let's say I've got a flyer and the opponent doesn't have any flyers and every turn I can just pump that flyer, you know, another plus one, plus one, because I don't have anything else to do with my mana. Sure. But that's a classic definition of a D good situationally. Right. Yep. I agree. The glam, the glam ring or glam ring. <laughs> I'm glam ring, glam ring. I think it's glam ring. Yeah, so two colorless legendary artifact equipment. Equipped, crit equipped creature has first strike and gets plus one, plus zero for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may cast instant or sorcery spell uh, from your hand with mana value less than or equal to that damage without paying its mana cost. Put three. Why did I not like this card? Well, I mean, to, to, to equip it the first time is five mana. Two to play it, three to equip it, right? Yeah, and then you have to pay... And it's equal to, the, to that damage without paying its mana costs. So it's not really giving you a whole lot of power. In order for you to get a value out of this, it's got to be going on a high-value target. Or something enough, you know, like two or three just to cast your two or three mana spells. Well, but hold on. Think about this, right? So if I throw this on something that's already a decent card, like it's a 4-4 four, four or better. Oh, if you're playing red and blue. Okay, hold up. And I've got three instant or sorcery spells in my 
graveyard, so now it's a plus three, plus yeah, three. Yeah, now first it's strike. pumping it. Yeah. Okay. So okay. now I'm attacking with, say, a seven, four first strike. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, they're going to have to deal with it. Now, is it an instant win con? No. But let's say they don't block it or they can't. Um, or I put it, dang, I put it on something that has trample. That's the play, right? So, like, I play this in red or one of the others yeah. where I've got trample. Um, and so now it's going to do the damage. And now I get to cast an instant or sorcery from my hand for free. This could snowball. Um, it's an A minus for me. It's, um, it's still a little situational, but darn, it's strong. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, and it's got first. Hey, don't let me convince you if you're not there, right? Like, I want I, you I'm to, gonna go B minus on this. If yeah. you don't believe it, yeah. Okay, B minus. I might be a little enamored with the lore of it, right? It's Gandalf's sword. <laughs> Right. They thought it'd be awesome. Um, but I think, I don't know. I think it could be pretty amazing. So Horn of Gondor, three colorless for a legendary artifact. When it enters a battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Um, so that's nice. But for three, and so you could spin three, tap it, and create X 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, where X is the number of humans you control. So... Um, I gave it a I gave it a B because you want to put this in your green white deck, I feel like. I gave it an A because I'm assuming I'm not gonna draft this if I don't have humans. You follow? So yep. like if I'm a I, like but there's so many things that have humans um that this is gonna spit out a ton of tokens. And vice versa, uh, the glam drink. I wouldn't play that if I'm not doing red or blue. So my B okay, minus. Right. So I'll give it an A minus then. Fine. You know, I mean, there is a condition that I need to be in a humans, um, you know, moderately humans focused deck. But so, there's a lot of humans in a lot of the colors. Yeah. This is obviously especially leaning toward white. Dude, think about the token synergy decks too. This oh is, yes, this, this is a crazy good card, and it's only three mana. Um, and then three to activate, and you just keep doing it. Oh. it. It it could potentially snowball, yeah. It could just blow things out of the yeah. You could break arena by <laughs> generating so many tokens. <laughs> oh, because think about this: every token is a human. Yeah, and then when you oh uh, yeah, like it's, the it's second time you activate it's it. It's exponential. Just yeah, it's just ridiculous. Okay, I had a B on this. Um, I'm gonna do A minus. Right. Horn of the Mark, two colorless legendary artifact. Whenever two or more creatures you control attack a player, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in order. Uh, I gave it a B. Could be more, um, but uh, especially because it's looting and revealing something, um, maybe a B plus. I'll give it a B plus. Yeah, this is a solid B plus to me um, because the creatures just need to attack, and there's a lot of things that make cheap token creatures that you might attack with. And looking at the top five cards of your library and picking one creature, and then the rest go back into your library um that's pretty awesome for looting the creatures out of your deck i agree it's a great card b plus for sure inherited envelope uh three colorless artifact when this enters the battlefield the ring tempts you and you can add it for you can tap it to add one mana of any color so it's a it's a three um Three mana, mana stone, whatever. Mana rock, yeah. Yeah. So I gave it a D. It's situation. I mean, you take this if you need the fixing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and three mana for a mana rock. I mean, I get the ring tempts you. A plus for flavor again, right? I mean, because that's, <laughs> that's Frodo getting the envelope from Bilbo right there. It's so cool. Um, 
I'm with you. I think that's probably a D. If I if I'm in a deck like green where I really want to ramp, or if I'm doing weird things because of legendaries where I need the fixing. If I need fixing, this this goes way up on the list. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely where the situational part comes in, at least for me. Yep. And by the way, I, I know a streamer who ranks very well, who in this last set would go for f all fixing as much as he could grab in pack one and passing up all kinds of great cards and then grab anything good in pack two and pack three. <laughs> like, And he did very well. And he was known for playing three to five color decks in this last set because of that. It's an interesting approach, right? So he would love a card like this. Okay, Shock, uh, moving on to... Hail to the king, baby. Thank you for that follow. Thank you for that follow. Uh, the Lambus, Lambus, Lambus. Yeah, Lambus bread. Uh, two colorless for artifact food. When this enters the battlefield, scry one and draw a card. You can pay two and tap Hail it. Hail to the king, baby. Thank you for the follow. Uh, you can pay two and tap it. You gain three life when you sacrifice the Lambus. And when Lambus is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, its owner shuffles it into the library. So it comes right back. Because Lambda's bread mm. is always filling. <laughs> so flavor-wise, flavor-wise score once again, yeah, really, really well done, Watsy. Um, it's two mana loot scry, which I like right off the bat, and then later as a mana dump, if you got extra mana, you can sacrifice it, gain three life, and then it goes right back into your library. So it for cycles me, back, yeah. For me, I gave this a. I, 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 I'm giving it a C. Um, I feel like maybe a C plus, but I, for me, it's a C. I'm going to give it a C plus, um, but I but I feel you on that. Um, just because for me, it's the scry one and then draw, which is awfully nice. And it obviously it's better with certain things like blue, which really cares about scry. But um, pretty nice, man. And not to be underestimated, the gaining three life can make a difference too. So. Yeah, pretty cool. I like it. Okay, so Mira of Galadriel, two colorless legendary artifact. Five, it's it's got a five colorless tap uh, activation here where you can scry one and draw a card. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. So we have a lot of legendaries in the set. You get a scry one, draw one for five. So you're basically paying, well, seven if you don't have any legendaries. Um, I'm giving this one a D. I don't know if I would actually pick this, but it, it goes great with the blue deck, you know, but, uh. Well, for me, because it's not just scry, but also draw, that helps me feel a little better about it. So I've got it. I actually have it as a C plus. Um, so again, for our C category, I wouldn't draft this over a really good B or an A, obviously, but it, amongst C's, it's interesting. Card draw is awfully strong. And the yeah. fact that it, that it can keep doing that, pretty nice, and especially late game, this could be huge, because um, you've played all the stuff in your hand by then. And so, dump some mana, scry one, so you don't even just have to draw, you get to pick what you want to draw. Uh, it's pretty nice, man. Deck thinning, filtering, um, yeah, C plus for me. Yeah, uh, I'm keeping my D on this just because uh, I, I find it very situational. Um, I, I'm more worried about not having the legendary creatures on the board to, uh, you know, bring that five down. So, uh, but yeah, D for me. Um, but uh, who knows? After it, after the set plays out, uh, for those that are joining the stream, um, we are creating an, an Excel sheet that you can. Um, get off of my discord after we finish the set review so uh, i'll probably post that tomorrow uh it'll be available tomorrow and as the set goes on and as we play it i'll be updating it so with uh improved or uh rankings on the cards depending on how they played out whether they're good or or uh worse so there you go Uh, Mithril Coat here, uh, three colorless for a flash indestructible when Mithril Coat uh, enters a battlefield. Attach it to target legendary creature you control. Equipped creature has indestructible, and it's got an equipped three cost as well. 
So I like the fact that when it enters, we can put it on something. It has indest and then that creature has indestructible, and the equipment on itself is indestructible, and it's flash. Um, I'm gonna go C uh, C minus with this. No wait, why? Why did I make this a D? Hold on. Well, because the flash is really only useful if you've got a legendary on on deck. Yeah, so it is very situational. Uh, there's a bunch of legendary creatures, and I would assume that this will just sit in your hand instead. You know, if you or you don't have anything else to do with your mana, you play it for three, even though it doesn't do anything, and then the next turn you pay three to equip it to something non-legendary. Yeah, I I I have a D on this. Uh... No, actually, I have a D plus. I have a D plus. I don't. I, I may change it later after I play with. It. That's really interesting. It's it's a solid B for me. Giving something indestructible, even if it takes me two turns to do it, um, especially if I could do it with like with some of my bigger things. I keep bringing up the six four elephant just because it's one of the bigger things out there. But you know, put this on a six four, right? <laughs> with or put it on something with trample, and now it's got indestructible. Even if it took me six mana to get there, oh man, that's, I don't know, <laughs> that's pretty strong. All right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll change it to a C. <laughs> I see your D and raise it to a C. Okay, I got it. The one ring, four colorless. Uh, it's indestructible when the one ring enters a battlefield if you cast it. You gain protection from everything until your next turn. Just you, not your creatures. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life for each burden counter on the one ring. So you can tap it and put a burden counter on the one ring. And then draw a card for each burden counter on the one ring. So I gave it a B minus. Yeah, it's interesting. So f firstly, if I'm reading it right, Let's say I've got a pretty, you know, let's say if the opponent can't block at all. I've got lethal on board. Now, it, that doesn't even matter. I play this at the, before pre-combat and everything I attack with can't die, right? No, no, no. Just you gain protection from everything until your next turn. So you can't die. No, no, no. Oh, it's indestructible. That's right. You gain protection. Okay, okay. You're right. Yeah, so you as the the wizard, uh, you know, uh, you're right. You, so until your next turn, so it, you know, it's, it, yeah. I mean, but the draw synergy, the draw power of this is, yeah. I mean, you're tapping into tempo, but it's also costing you a life now each turn. Like, how much do you tap into the power? <laughs> Which is a very one ring thing to do, right? Right. Good flavor. Um, okay, what did you give it then? I gave See, it a B. B uh, B minus. B minus. I. I'm going to go C plus because what I'm really getting is card draw. I'm getting an escalating amount of card draw. This costing me one life, two life, three life, four life. Like this better work out pretty soon. <laughs> right. Unless I've got a way to do life gain, which if I've got food tokens, I can. Okay. Exactly. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm back to your B minus camp. I'm I'm in. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Palantir of uh, Orthanc, uh, three colorless at the beginning of your instep. Put an influence counter on this and scry two. Then target opponent may have you draw a card. If that player doesn't, you mill X cards, where X is a number of influence counter on the Planetir of Orthanc. And that player loses life equal to the total mana value of those cards. I gave this a solid... Wow. Um, it's good. But the, the opponent can dance around it. I like these kind of gambly cards, right? Because, you know, you can end up milling yourself quite a bit, right? If the influence counter gets up to three, four, et cetera, right? Because that hap every turn you get one more influence counter, if I'm reading this right. Yes, at the uh, beginning, at, of, your at the beginning of your end step. So you also get a scry, too. That's pretty awesome. 
put an influence counter, scry two, then a target, they can have you draw a card. Oh man, so you could you could scry two, and then they could choose to have you mill, which which is a bummer. <laughs> right. So like you put something great in there from your scry, and then they're like, nope, you're not drawing a card. So they have you mill. That's right. Um, but you could be sneaky about it, knowing that they're probably going to have you mill. You yeah, put, because you're scrying. You put something with a five or six mana value in there, and they lose five, six life. Mm. It's every turn, yeah. This is really strong. It's a gambly card, though. Um, what'd you rate it? I did a solid B on this. Yeah, I'm with you on B. I, I was almost kind of borderline, you know, like A minus. This is going to be one of those that's going to feel bad to lose to. <laughs> 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 right. It's going to happen. And it's cheap. Yeah. It's only three mana. So you can you can start this nonsense early game. I might even go B plus on this. You know what? I'm doing B plus. Uh, you talked me into it. I'm with you on that. This is kind of ridiculous. It's it's either going to work out really well or very badly. <laughs> but at least the game won't drag on forever. <laughs> right? Yeah. So Vial of Galadriel, three colorless, if you would draw a card while you have cards in hand, draw two cards instead. If you would gain life while you have five or less, you gain twice that much life instead. And it also, it's a mana rock. So add one mana of any tap. So, um... I gave it a C minus just because, uh, well, the whole draw. Hold on, I you know, C, maybe C plus, maybe C plus. I mean, I. So most of the time, it's a three mana mana rock. Fix most it. of the time, the, there is which upside, is, which, is, which is pretty pretty good in the right deck um and then later like if you're getting low on life and you got any food tokens you cash in a food token and instead of getting three life you now get six six pretty sweet um you know what i'll, I'll, and I'll if you've do... got and if you've got like uh, card draw because you're in blue hmm? okay sorry go ahead what were you thinking <sighs> I feel like C plus, but I feel like I'm going to increase it later. Is that? I'm going to do C plus. I think honestly, there's there's a D element to this. It's very situational, right? Like, but just a three mana mana rock, um, is is a C. But if you've got a deck where you pulled one of those multicolor cards where you need a bunch of weird mana, it, then the value goes way up. Or if you're in a food deck, or if you're in a scry deck, then now the mana, get, you know, the value goes up. So yeah, C plus. It's a mana rock with upside. All right, moving on to Shire Scarecrow, two colorless defender. It's a zero three uh, artifact creature scarecrow, and it's got a one mana activation uh, for add one mana of any color. Activate each turn so um i for me this is highly situational it's a it's a d uh, like i'll take it for fixing but uh you know you know what that's fair i was going to give it a c but you're right that's more of a d like if i don't need fixing i'm not gonna i'm not gonna draft this Otherwise, it just sits there and, pays, and, and is just a blocker. So, yeah. Well, I mean, a two mana 03 from a defender standpoint is, eh, you know, I mean, like if I'm playing the slow game, like if I'm in blue, yeah, I'm kind of bad. control, I want to slow things down, I want to blunt aggro decks. It's good for that. But yeah, it's situational. It's a D. It's a common. So, you know, a D or a C is not crazy for a common. Getting over to Sting, the Glinting Dagger, two colorless for legendary artifact equipment, quick creature gets plus one, plus one, and has haste. The beginning of each combat, untap equipped creature, and equipped creature has first strike as long... Uh, so this is each combat. I don't know if I mentioned it. The beginning of each combat, untapped equipped creature. Equipped creature has first strike as long as it's blocking or blocked by a goblin or orc. Uh, equipped two. I gave this a B. Because I love First Strike, it's two to cast it, and it's two to put onto a creature. 
So if you're going to be blocking with this, it's, it's the creature that you're blocking with uh, or that you're utilizing to block with is going to have first strike. Um, and if you're playing against red or black, oh, even better. So I, for me, this is just a, a B card. I, I would take it. I, I might even rank it uh, lower, um, but uh, for me, it's a B. So this is a very interesting card. First, I'm so glad they've got Sting in here. It's very cool and dead on, you know, giving it extra things against goblins and orcs. Um, this could be a pretty sneaky card. So let's say Sting is already on board, right? You've already played it for two. And then again, my favorite uh, example card, Oliphant, comes in. And for two mana, I equipped this thing on it. Now it's a 7-5. I gave it haste. Dang. <laughs> right? Like, that's really cool. Um, another option, so I'm looking at the middle part. At the beginning of each combat, untap a creature. Remember in blue, we talked about the Watcher in the Water, the 9-9? Nine -nine? Yes. If I could use this to untap that... Um, that's interesting. And it's only two mana to move this around. Uh, so it is each combat. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, that thing comes in with nine stun counters on it. This would help remove those stun counters. So, um, yeah. But also the... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty cool. What, what are you giving it? You're giving it a B? I gave it a B. Because uh, I like yeah. the fact that it's each combat. Yeah, I give it a B. Situationally, it could even be better. It's it's a cool card. I'm glad that, you know, from a lore standpoint, they put it in the set. Very nice. Uh, almost done with the artifacts here. Um, Stone of uh, Iraq. Am I saying that right? One colorless legendary artifact. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. And then you can also pay to and tap this, sacrifice the stone, uh, exile target player's graveyard, and draw a card. Um, gave this a B minus, uh, but I, I I think it's actually, I think I want to give this a B instead. Uh -huh. Because. If you kill anything of theirs, it's getting it's getting exiled. So they don't get graveyard recursion. Um, and you can also sacrifice it, get rid of what's in their graveyard and draw a card on top of it. So it's a three mana draw card. Uh, but there's a lot of value of it if it's target. It's, it's more of a best of three card. I was about action. to say that exact thing, man. It's a great sideboard card. So maybe maybe um, maybe I'll just do B minus with because it, it, it's, it's obviously higher when it's in best of three. Um, but uh, like I, I would. Hmm. This is it, this isn't better than a C for me. Um, I think it's I, so conditional. I think I'm going to do C plus. Yeah, because. Yeah, I wouldn't prioritize this over certain B cards, so I would I would hardly ever pick this man. I mean, and, unless I had some very specific things going on, because this could actually hose me over if I want the opponent to have stuff in their graveyard, for example, right? Um, uh, true. Okay. All right. I'm 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 down ranking to a C then. There, yeah. There's not that many cards where I care where I do want to harvest thing from an opponent's graveyard, but there are some where that matters. Um, this does keep an opponent who has graveyard synergy things from gaining that. So, like, if I'm playing against a player that has black. And they've got that 3-1 card, the Golem card, that keeps, you know, that you can keep, like, bringing back and bringing back. This shuts that down. Um, yeah, I'll go with C on this. I don't think it's a best of one card. I, best of three, for sure. <laughs> All right, Wizards Rockets. One colorless artifact uh, enters the battlefield tapped. You can pay X colorless mana and tap the wizard rockets artifact and then you sacrifice it add x mana in any combination of colors when wizards rockets is put into a graveyard from the battlefield draw a card um i went with c on this 
I went with D only because I just feel like it's situational that I would care about the mana Actually, colors. You're you're right. It's it's so situational. This is a D. Yeah, I mean, even the fact that I can sack it, um, you know, when I sack it, I draw a card, so it replaces itself. I guess in that regard, it's sort of quote free, <laughs> right? Like you you played it for one mana, you tapped it for five, you got five mana of some kind, and it goes away, and you get a card draw out of it, so it's a one mana card draw, which is a replace itself thing. It's kind of, I mean, in a deck where I need fixing, it's amazing. Yep, a, a D for me. Yep. All right. A Rata Doer, I think is how you say it, enters a battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. You can tap it, uh, add black mana. It's X, X, black, tap, and then a mass orcs X. Only... Uh, you can activate it only if a creature died this turn. And I gave it a B plus. Yeah, I think it's Bada Dur. Um Can't wait for people to correct us. But I, I think this is one of the strongest rare lands in the deck because of the amass capability, right? Uh, especially late game, man. This thing just spits out orcs. Um yeah, I don't know if I mean I'm like I almost want to go A ish, you know. What did you give it again? B B plus? I gave it B plus, yeah. Yeah, I'll go with you on that, but I think there this this could be one of those It could be an A minus, that's for could, sure. Could could be a game winner, yeah. In the right deck. This it's amazing, right? I we haven't seen lands this cool in a long time. Yeah, it's freaking amazing land. I will always pick this. If I'm playing a black color, it, it's really an enchantment, right? I mean, like it doesn't play like a land. Um, I can't remember having lands as strong. This is this is really cool. And it doesn't die. Yeah. So you could keep doing this every time a creature died. Oh, so, yeah, there there was a um, yeah, I don't know if we got land removal. It's any creature, too, by the way. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um. So, yeah, your opponents are yours. But yeah, anyway, uh, moving on. Great Hall of the Citadel. Um. It's a tap, uh, add colorless, or you can pay one and tap and then add two mana in any combination of colors. Spend this mana to only cast legendary spells. Um, why did I give this a D when we have so many legendaries? Hold on. Well, it is, I mean, like it's conditionally useful, right? I mean, because tapping one land for colorless is kind of, mm, getting two mana, if you can only cast legendary, it's very conditional. Okay, so yeah, I'll stick with my D on this. I think I'm with you on that. Like, I don't think I would pick this over one of my lands that's in my colors. I'd pick cards and, over this any day, and, yeah. It, unless I had, well, no, I'm just thinking about like, yeah, you're right, I'd pick cards over it too. But, um, but if I've got a lot of legendaries, especially some that cost a bit, then yeah, this gets interesting. Perfect example of a D. So the Grey Havens, uh, legendary land. When the Grey Havens enters the battlefield, scry one. Uh, we can tap, add colorless, uh, or we can tap, add one mana of any color among legendary creature cards in the graveyard. Uh, I gave it. I I'm gonna do a D as well. It come scries. Now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a D. I had C minus on this, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it a C, because um, it's kind of in there, you know, amongst things I might draft. It's not, it, it's fine, but it's not amazing, unless um, have one man of any color among legendary creature cards in your graveyard. Nah, I think you're right, actually. I think it's a D, because it's not just legendary creatures I control. It's those that are in my graveyard. Yeah, me. Might even be an F. Like, why would I draft this in, <laughs> in Limited? Scry 1? Maybe. Uh, minus yeah. Terrath. Uh, this uh, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary. You can tap it, add white mana can also spin one colorless one white tap it and draw a card activate only if you attack with two or more creatures this turn i gave it a b 
Um, it's a solid B. I like it a lot. And a white deck, wow, right? Like, really great. Yeah, and you you definitely want to be, you know, aggressive with white or red. So, yeah, I, B for me. At some point you do. Like, you may you may spend time going white on the board and then you do your attack. Yep. Um, I like that it can just be a plain old white land <laughs> in the meantime, right? Like Exactly. The, um, you do have to control a legendary creature to keep it from coming in tapped. Yeah, this one's this one's great. Mines of Moria, uh, it uh, enters a battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. You can tap it, add red mana, or you can spend three colorless red mana. So three colorless, one red mana, tap it, exile three cards from your graveyard, and create two treasures. Uh, it's, a, it's a C for me. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see, I'm not too. Treasure tokens are nice, and it goes great with our bat Batman card. But I, so, I feel... yeah, go spin ahead. Spin four to get two. You know, it spin four to get two mana token. You know, it's like eh. So to me, it's a D because it's situational. If I'm in Rakdos, um, red black. Um, this is more interesting to me than if I'm in some other some other colors. I actually, even if I'm in, like if I'm in Rakdos, maybe I don't want to exile things from my graveyard because maybe I want to bring them back. If I don't have any graveyard recursion, then ba being able to make treasure tokens, especially if I have something that has synergies with tokens this is cool i don't know dude this seems super situational to me and i don't like the fact that it's if i don't have a legendary it comes in tap it's a d to me again in the right deck it's it's super useful but i'm not going to go out of my way to draft this against other things unless it just has those right synergies yeah um i gave this a c i i'll give it a d i'll give it a d Mount Doom, legendary land. You can tap it, pay one life to add black or uh, red mana. You can pay one colorless, one black, one red, and tap it to have Mount Doom deals one damage to each opponent. You can pay five colorless, one black, one red, and tap it uh, to sacrifice Mount Doom and a legendary artifact. Choose up to two creatures, then destroy the rest. Activate only as a sorcerer. Um, I like this. If so, OK, first off, remind <laughs> me. There's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. <laughs> How many legendary artifacts do we have again? Let me scroll up. Oh, uh, man. Two. Three, it's a good point. Five, six, I, le, it's not just legendaries; seven, it's legendary eight, nine, artifacts. Ten, eleven, not that yeah. many. I, there, like there's eight. eleven. Oh, okay, eleven. Well, that's just in the artifact category. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, okay. So, two. Okay. So you're going to sacrifice Mount Doom and a legendary artifact. Yeah, I mean, I give this a B minus because ah, I, this is where I would pick. Remember when we were talking about a stone of Eric, uh, Iraq, whatever we gave it as I gave it a C. It's legendary. And if anything we destroy, it's getting ex exiled, you know, so. Mount Doom would clear the board. Except for, you know, choose up to two creatures. Yeah, I, I, and then destroy the rest. Activate to me, a... this only approaches its mythic potential if you've got a legendary artifact, right? So it's pretty damn situational. Um, I, lo again, love the flavor that it's a pain land, right? Like anytime you want to use it, it's going to cost you something. Um, the fact that it can ping an opponent for one is uh, useful in their turn, but um, this looks like it would be awesome. 
It's actually a D for me. <laughs> I, I hear you. I, I'm like struggling to rate this one. Like, if I drafted a legendary artifact and then this came up, maybe. But even then, it's like, okay, so I have to have dr drawn that legendary artifact, which I probably only got one in my deck. Don't forget you can... In, there's not that many in the set that I could draw. And don't right? forget you can spin three just to ping, though. So. I know, but it's ping for one. I know. And in the meantime, every time I use this thing, it pings me for one. Well, if you use it for mana, yes. Well... Yeah. <laughs> and even anyway, if you do use it for mana, usually it's pretty good. Like, derp, 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 I'm out of doom. You know, I mean, like, it's a, <laughs> it's a D. <laughs> like, okay. Constructed, it, this is a constructed card. I, it I might even be an F. This might even, I mean, like, I'm close on that. <laughs> uh, let's if it see. said sacrifice, mount, doom, and a legendary, then I would have been there with you. This would have been like, damn, you know. But no, legendary artifact. Okay, okay, all right. I will give it a D. Dude, you can give it what you want. No, I'm just I, you. I, I, because my first guess, like, oh man, this is gonna be awesome. But no, so great. It, board it, it really like, is yeah. a build around. So, except I can hardly ever activate that ability that costs seven mana. By the way, actually eight because I got to tap this thing too. Dang it, Mount Dooms gets a D. All right, going to Rivendell. Enters a battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. Tap it to add blue mana. One colorless, one blue, and tap Scry 2. Activate only if you control a legendary creature. Well, that happens quite often. Um, so, and with our blue-green, um, I'm giving this a B. Yeah, I was waiting for uh, your scroll up on the stream. Sorry, I should probably be following separately. Um, scry to activate. Da, 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 da. Man, in the right deck. I I think this is a. Um, I think it's a B minus for me. Sure. And you gave it a B? I gave it a B. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm only going to be playing this in a blue deck, uh, which cares about Scry. And having something that no matter what, I can pay two and, well, three and get a Scry two. Scry two actually by itself, even without synergies. Activate only if you control a legendary creature. Yeah, I'm not that worried about that. B minus. Oh, you know what? No, it's a C plus for me because back to my B criteria, would I pick this over C, C plus things? No, I wouldn't. For the chance that I might get a scry two for three mana? No. This is in the C category for me. C category for you? Um, I might make this a B minus for me then. So you would still pick this over C plus cards in the pack. Yeah, because it's still a land and I get to scry as long as I have the legendary. Yep. yep. But it's a tap land unless you had that legendary in play already. So it slows you down and blue is about having higher tempo over the opponent, right? Yep. I like the I like the push pull on it. No, I'm cool, man. I mean C plus B minus. You and I are close. <laughs> All right, going to the Shire. Uh enters a battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. You can tap it to add green mana. Or you can pay one colorless green, one green, and tap it to tap an untapped creature you control and create a food token. On this one, I've gone back and forth with it because of our food synergies and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I gave this a C, but I mean, if you got a nice food deck that utilizes these food tokens, I think it gets even higher. But for me, just straight off the bat, uh, I would say a C. It's a C. I'm, I'm with you on that. In the right deck, it's worth more, right? A deck that cares about tokens, a deck that cares about food. 
but just sitting there by itself, it's a C that could that could uh, upgrade situationally. All right, Shire Terrace here. I believe this is our last card, right? Yeah, man, we're here. We've <laughs> done it. So yeah, Shire Terrace. Uh, you can tap it to add colorless mana, or you can pay one and tap it sh and sacrifice the Shire Terrace. Search your library for a basic land card, put it under the battlefield tap, and shuffle. I actually like cards like this. I gave it a B minus because it's still adding mana regardless of uh, colorless mana, granted. Uh, but um, I can sacrifice it and put it into play. Like sometimes you get like three white and one red and you need that double red, you know, and it's like th this gets you that double red, you know. Yeah, so. yeah good point. Even in a, even in a two color deck, that can be nice to fix the messed up um shuffler rng so i i i but would i prioritize it over other things now you know what i'm gonna have to make it a c plus now now that i've looked at it <laughs> i love our criteria right because it's helped us really move things around yeah i'm at a c plus on this i like it um there's a real good, it, it, you know, like this is probably a pack three pick for me, unless I've done one of these wild things with the multicolors where I'm like, oh, crud, I need three, four, five different colors of mana. Then this is high priority pick. But just even trolling along, I get in a pack three and there's not amazing things. I'm with you. I would pick this just to be able to go fix my mana, even in two color deck, to be sure I'm not stuck on all green, you know, and no white or whatever, <laughs> whatever's going on. 